It Owned Podcast. Goat, hang next to you as we end the stories brought to you by doomedandstoned.com.
Welcome to the Doom and Stone Show. Billy Goat here with you as usual with our co-host John Giss from Vegas Rock Revolution. How you doing, buddy? Hey, doing good. It's a beautiful, hot Friday night in Las Vegas, but I'm uh, hanging out with you and talking some good music tonight. Really excited about it. Hell yeah. Well, speaking of great music, we opened up with Villagers of Ionia City and that great album, Age of Aquarius, Father, Son, my favorite track on there. So glad you chose that for the opener. That one really gets me going. What an amazing uh, journey, really, the whole album is. And I ingested it pretty consistently because it was just so good. I want to hear it more. This song eventually kind of rose above a, a beautiful pack of songs from these uh, these fine folks from Greece. I mean, it's <laughs> uh, it's my number two album last year, and this song really is, you know, it's kind of a little reggae feel at the be- you know, the first part of these song, and then, woo, it picks up and does something, doesn't it? Yeah, you can kind of imagine the crowd just kind of clapping along to it rhythmically in the beginning there. Definitely is one yeah. that's made for a big open concert hall and a ton of people. And they're doing it. They that's uh, that's one of the reasons why I, I wanted to put it on here is just watching them in, in pretty interesting order this year, just really hit on the map in the U.S. and other places, but definitely in the U.S. Like, I, I don't know already anyone who even knew who they were until this album. And then you go back, and there's a couple other albums, but this is significantly different album right. than those than those. Still keeping with cool Greek instruments and stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, I really. What did you think? Like, did do you? I like their earlier stuff too. The earlier mm-hmm. stuff doesn't seem quite as anthemic as this album. Like, this has got the big ballads on it, so to speak. You know, the the larger concert pieces. Their other stuff felt a little bit more rural and earthy, and a little bit more like a peasant gathering or something like that on in the small village. <laughs> you know, but with yeah. that said, I don't see like a huge stylistic break between the two albums but i think this album's production level it, it it puts it in an entire different universe i mean we're talking the the clarity to the sound the spacing the air that that it breathes i mean in it, the theming of it, it it's just the whole thing is uh i mean it's obviously a concept album <laughs> i would guess they've really hit gold and they got picked up by who they get picked up by like nuclear blast or napalm one of the ends somebody big yeah you saw the greek revolution right i did yeah great documentary yeah they were on that too that was pretty interesting to see the behind the scenes well jump on into the first song selection for tonight yeah well you know tonight my i mixed things up this this week and i brought in a lot of bands a lot of them from europe quite frankly and bands that, that participated in my planet desert rock weekend and game over a bunch of them are that start off with a from a helsinki finland Kaiser, and you're real familiar with these guys too, I I find out. I love Kaiser. I've been following them since they were just putting on random YouTube videos. And Kaiser just has a great desert grooving, riffing stuff, man. O2 is, uh, for me, a very, very good frontman musician. He's got a lot of skills, this guy. Actually, when I first met him, I didn't know who he was for a while. He was like really clean cut stuff. So I'm like, is someone's like manager here with him? <laughs> and so eventually we he, he just, he came to in a conversation. And I just, I, I told him even, it's just like, I'm just laughing. Like I can't keep shit straight sometimes. And that's funny, you know, and he, he was very well-spoken and uh, these guys rock. These guys just rock. Their EP was good too. This was one of my top like five albums of 2018. I totally dig Kaiser. These boys from Finland. I'll just have to add that in 2018, when they released First Sound, we premiered the album on Doomed in Stone, and okay. it was the result of a really long history with the band. I would reach out to O2, you know, at least every other year. I don't remember how frequent uh-huh. it was, but I think they had maybe one song on SoundCloud, and I was like, man, the world really needs to hear you. When are you guys going to come out with something? And then they finally came out with something, and so then uh-huh. I wrote an article about my experience called Finding Kaiser. So check that out, guys, if you're interested. I will have to check that out for sure. And, you know, if I go back in time, I don't know necessarily the source of how I heard in the begin with. So who knows? I may owe you something there. I may not. 
but maybe. <laughs> um, I think it's when I see a band's name pop up a few times by a certain segment that just kind of is in my head as being people that, that know their shit a little bit. I like finding for myself new bands. And bands that you look at how many people they have as followers, followers, and you're like, well, <laughs> I like them a lot, and, but they could use some help, and they're worth it. Yeah. And that's uh, that's just what we try to do with really good bands and artists. Um, if we're able to help, we attempt it. It was magical to meet these guys. They also played for me over in uh, Yucca Valley. Me and Arthur C. from Unita and Houseburg Promises, we did a, a pre-party for Stone and Dusted. And I had on there uh, Kaiser, Saturna, Green Desert Water, Omega Sun, and someone else all played that day too. And uh, Kaiser got in an accident. I oh, know. In like Hollywood or something. And so they had a hard time getting back over. And so we shifted around the whole set so that they could still play. I had to, I had to work on all that shit for hours with a lot of people to disrupt that that schedule. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. But. They came all the way over to the States, and I'm going to tell them because they got in a car accident to fuck off and not play tonight. <laughs> and some people were trying to tell me that. And dude, I, I stand up for my band. I'm loyal to, to people that take a chance with me. I, 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 uh, I'm loyal to friends. And when you meet good people and they're, they're good back, and uh, that old trip for all those bands, we have like this kinship. That was the time we came together, and we all had a great time that night. We had a lot, we had a, probably. 150 people, maybe 160. It's pretty cool. Now, you picked a band so geographically far away from America and yet has such a great sound. Talk to us about Rough Magic. I picked them primarily for you, John, because you haven't had a chance to really soak them in from what I understand. And I'm going to give yep, you right. some of that Rough Magic tonight. And I mean that in the best possible <laughs> sense. I just realized how that sounded. I, I, I hope so. <laughs> I just realized how that That's sounded. That's funny. Awful. But, uh, yeah, yeah, you're going to get some of that rough magic tonight, John. And it, it's going to come from 2018's Seasons. And this is the album that really put these guys on the map. Rough Magic, a trio out of South Africa, Johannesburg. And uh, last year they, they came out with a follow-up to that album called Tarn. That got them several festival dates across Europe, which is great. I've been wanting them to get out of South Africa and tour forever. And to see them finally do it is awesome. I chose a song from Seasons, though, even though I love Tarn, because there are so many good songs in there. This one in particular sums up everything I ever imagined. The rough and tumble landscape of underground south africa to be especially at the clubs and bars it's called tar black blood and from what i can tell it's about somebody who is belligerently drunk i'll just read a bit of the lyric says uh, i hit my head on the way my way down blood on my shirt the baddest man in town gun on my hip yeah i ain't fooling around drink in my hand that i ain't putting down <laughs> Now, if that isn't like your Woo. quintessential rock and roll rebel at play, I don't know what is. It's a great song, and it's got a real badass, backwoods, bluesy feel to it, you know? I, I dug it. I'm totally... You know, I looked them up on Spotify. They don't have a whole lot of listeners. They got good music. They need to do a better job getting it out there because... Uh... They, they got, I mean, I'm going to listen to the whole album before I reserve judgment and say it's awesome, but I love this song. I thought this song's killer. It, sometimes you just have to be fed it on a platter, yeah. you know, to end up enjoying something. That's what's been great about the show for me, is that actually. When, uh, Bucky presented Buffalo Fuzz. What was that, Billy? Like maybe a month and a half ago, a month? Yep. I, I got them in a regular rotation. It's been pretty cool. I mean, we're hitting like all corners of the freaking planet on this show. <laughs> Because right after that, we're heading over to Slovenia. Right. You know where that is? Can you find that on a map, Billy? It's somewhere in Eastern Europe. That's all I know. Omega Sun. They have this really great album, uh, Opium for the Masses. Came out in 2017. I think they did like a, maybe a re-release on CD recently or something. Every single song is powerful. It's going to test your speakers. <laughs> Vocals have, at times, a Cornell-like quality to them. So I picked No Time to Stay, but the whole album, I mean, to literally just go to the band camp and press play. <laughs> That's all you got to do. 
you know, if you like doom, if you like stoner, if you like heavy rock, it just kind of, and, and you like maybe a little grunge feel mixed in, it, it's, that's the one. It's funny you mentioned Chris Cornell, right? Right. Because I heard a little James Maynard Keene in his vocals. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I think can it's see just that in a, some. A slight, but it's definitely got a little tinge of it. And the singer's name, I don't know his last name, but his first name is Igor. So not exactly as sexy sounding as James Maynard Keene, but Igor definitely brings his A-game into this and pulls off the job splendidly. He's also on bass. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Uh, those guys, they <laughs> they played Planet Desert Rock. We did a Sunday show at Counts Vamped where we had like six of them. Uh, six of the bands in Europe played. And, and they had to play kind of early, but <laughs> the people that were there, when they started really kicking in, and, that, and the sound is so good, good at count them yeah you immediately there were people like walking out of the bar you're like what the fuck <laughs> and it, you know these guys have such a solid sound i've been an admirer of them and have helped as much as possible with them because their music's just really good i was hanging out with those guys and they were telling me where slovenia was or slovenia and uh and they told me oh they have a coastline it's he told me how beautiful it was I like wow it's beautiful that's i don't hear that much about Eastern European countries necessarily uh, as the first description. And then they started describing all these things. I'm like, yes, that's awesome. They're like, so you'll come to Slovenia sometime? And I'm like, maybe. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I was uh, e-dating a girl from Slovenia. I just remembered her now. It wasn't long. It was like maybe for a month over a summer. Yeah, well, you know I could ask some questions right now. I'm like, all right, so wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I had quite the international dating scene going on for a good year and a half for a while, and they were all people in the music scene, right? But well, you weren't actually seeing them, right? Well, not in a manner of speaking. You were seeing them virtually, but... Seems important to me. Yeah, exactly. That Seems important to me. That's ultimately why, you know, things don't work out with a lot of those right. personal relationships. I, I, I hear you. It is ultimately very cool that we broken down the communication barrier so much just in my lifetime that you could even consider dating virtually for at least a while. But yeah. Right. Now, what's your thought? Did you were able to listen to some of the songs? Do you know these guys? Tell me a little bit about your background with Omega Sun. I don't have a huge background with them. Do they have cool. just one album to their name? I think so. They have one album and a single. Yeah, and like one single. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. I may have known about them back in 2014. That was when the scene just felt so small and accessible. Uh, I respect their game. They've they've got, as you say, deep, powerful riffs and strong vocals, and that's what makes them stand aside from other bands. I, I think so too. Now. Now we switch back over, we go to Baton Rouge for the next one and your, your pick here. I've actually never heard of the this band. Tell us a little bit about what's, uh, what's next. Well, it, it doesn't surprise me you haven't heard them and that's not a put down, John. Uh, it's just not the type of music you like to lounge around and listen to or take with you to the gym. But they're true uh. underground legends, even beyond the Louisiana scene. I'm talking Thou, T-H-O-U, for those of you who are new to the band. They come from a genre called sludge. So if you've heard of the bands I Hate God and Crowbar and Pantera and Down, they're all kind of descending from that family. A lot more caustic, I would say. Uh, and that makes it a bit strange that they have such a penchant for covering bands like Soundgarden and Nirvana. They have some of the most iconic covers of these two Seattle bands in the, the heavy underground doom sludge scene. Basically, they just released a full, gosh, it must be 12 tracks of all the Nirvana singles they've covered, and it's called Blessings of the Highest Order. I gotta talk to them sometime because they have a lot of religious references in their music and especially album titles like this one, you know, Blessings of the Highest Order. That's that's pure, you know, church speak right there. All their covers, every single one of their covers are by an artist called Gustav Doré, who was a 19th century, I know he was an artist, but I don't know if he was also maybe a historian, but he was definitely an artist and he did this whole series of biblical illustrations in the Old and New Testament, which are just stunning and they pull one of those for every single album cover. Oh, they, wow. 
I know that they some church boys deep down inside. They were raised in the deep south in the Bible Belt, just Damn like him. just like me, and that they rebelled just like me, and that Nirvana was one of the bands they rebelled to. Um, now this is one of the least uh, off-putting, I would say, for maybe somebody who's coming <laughs> to this from the stoner rock side, like you, John. It's a cover of In Bloom. Yep. It has some female singers in it who are not regulars in yeah. their cadre, but who have cut a few albums uh, with them. In their cadre? I said cadre. Is that all right? I like it. Just want to give you points for it. Just okay. like heads up. That's cool. I, like I wasn't sure. You know, I got to... I'll have to use it sometime. I'm going to steal it from you. So, yeah, this is just one I like to sing along with, honestly, more than anything else. What can I say? How do you pronounce the state they're from? Louisiana. Well, some people say that, Lu- Louisiana. You know, down here in Louisiana, Louisiana, Louisiana. I, I lived in East Texas, which isn't far from Louisiana, but I never said anything other than Louisiana. Got a few yeah. So, I, and I did have an accent when I moved up here, a little bit of a Texas accent, but it was slight. So I think the fact that I was born in Canada kind of cursed me to pronounce things very phonetically. Damn Canadians. I know. I'm, I'm going to say. You're a Canuck. You're born in Canada. Amazing. I didn't know that. Yeah, born in Canada, I don't consider it my country. It was definitely my country for three years, two or three years when I was an infant. Cool. Let's get this little set rocking from Finland, uh, South Africa, Slovenia, and then we finish it up with Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Sounds awesome. We'll be back with more on the Doomed and Stone Show.
Well, you all recognize that. That was a cover of In Bloom by Nirvana, and it was covered by the Almighty Thou, who brought us blessings of the highest order, which, by the way, is a free download on their Bandcamp site. We also heard from Omega Sun from the album Opium for the Masses, which came out in 2017. The song was No Time to Stay. And Rough Magic brought us Tar Black Blood from Seasons. And then we opened this first segment with Kaiser's First Sound, the 2018 album of the year for many of us, or at least top five, top ten territory. And we heard Fuzz of Fury. Speaking of Kaiser, did you know, John, that O2, or his full name, which I'm going to attempt here, Ali O2 Ceremony, was in a band and technically still is in the band, although he tells me he hasn't heard from the band members in a while, called Altar of <laughs> Battle geese. What's battle geese mean? Battle geese is a star. It's like a sun somewhere out in the universe. I don't know, but that's what it is. Huh. It's, a, it's like star what? or a constellation or some shit. I thought maybe it was like Beetlejuice, but like in their language or some weird thing. Yeah, you never know. I don't know. Beetlejuice actually may have come <laughs> from battle geese. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to tell, you know. But uh, so yeah, I gave it a listen and really cool. Tell me about what. Why'd you pick this song? I think that's the easiest thing to ask. Why'd you pick I picked it this, this master? One, because for this program, we kind of went all out with stuff we thought was neglected, bands that aren't well known, or just stuff we think is really cool and wanted to share with each other and with the audience. And when I saw right. you picked a Kaiser, I was like, hey, it's going to work out great. The band is a doom sludge slash death metal band but they have some stuff on this album, Among the Ruins, from 2017, that's really accessible. And this actually sounds like O2's best attempt at Chris Cornell. I mean, his vocals are in fine order here. Yeah, and really good. Yeah, and I love the chorus, too. It's, tell me how to find direction, a path to a better future. I gotta get rid of the Sledge of Stones. So that's the name of the song, Sledge of Stones. I remember when this first came out, and I think it was released on Transcending Obscurity Records or maybe even a, another label, but they hadn't released this single. They had danced around it, the first track, the last track, and I wanted so bad to share Sledge of Stones with the world, and I couldn't. I had to wait until the release. That was really frustrating, right. but uh, I finally did. It didn't take off like I thought it would, and, and I, I think that's probably the case for a lot of the music we share that we feel so passionately about that it feel like it should be so more grandly received. And I agree, it really comes down to, commitment's the, probably the biggest thing. They, they have to spend money to make money as a band. If they're that good, you know, you gotta, you gotta spend money on things. You gotta, you gotta have people doing things that are good at stuff for you. <laughs> because you can try to figure it out, but you're working another job because you're sure to fuck not doing this full time. And you know, they have so little time to do things. So some of them are masterful at social media and and, uh, and getting their music out to, to, to a certain level. But most of the time, if they're really, really great, one reason why a label will sell you a bunch more albums besides just putting them on a label is they have a machine behind them that has hired people that do stuff professionally for you to some degree. And of course, they're all their connections and all that other stuff. So. The more we get good music coming out of our scene, whatever way possible, and it gets more and more in front of people, it gets more and more in the norm, that's the move in the right direction because it's out of movies, it's out of TV, the rock and roll is not a commercials, you know? So it takes the underground and the people in it giving a shit and being committed to helping the scene. Right. And that means, you know, expanding your horizons, listening to new bands, going, eventually <laughs> to shows um and supporting and becoming a fan you know if you like them and being open-minded so i tell you by six years it certainly has grown to many degrees and has a great history at that so i think that's kind of cool now you know man you have comes out of Finland too i understand monster not is that correct yeah monster not <laughs> one of the guys knows one of the guys from kaiser i think i mentioned that earlier this band with an excellent, full tilt, just rocking album, uh, Enter the Storm, 2018, 
I picked Landslide. I could have picked others, but Landslide's kind of their, their, their trademark song on this album. And it brings definitely a Fu Man Chu attitude, mm -hmm. feel, sound. I don't care what you call it. It's still real good. So they got two albums. Heavy Psych Sounds is a, you know, a label that picks up these smaller bands like this and sometimes helps. And this is a this, this solid band. Played a Planet as a Rock. They played, uh, these guys played in like LA and a couple other places. I think they played at the Whiskey in 1968. So they made the most of the little trip over here too. And you know about these guys, of course. This album, Enter the Storm, is probably the best Sonics you'll ever hear on a rock slash metal album. It's deep. Yeah. And the song right after Landslide kind of reminded me of Temptations Wings by Down. Um, it's got oh. sort of the wobbling guitar riff that I really liked from that song. So if you like what you're about to hear with Monster Knot, you need to get a hold of Enter the Storm. It's, it's a keeper for sure. And it came out during a right really on. busy year. 2018 was, was not a year to sneeze Fuck at. Yeah. Every big band came out with new music in 2018. Amazing year. Yep. I did my own top 40, Billy, and I wouldn't include the bigger label ones. I, I made a separate top 10 for them, and that's it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I didn't want to hurt the smaller bands. Yeah. I wish I had, I wish yeah. I had done that, because I couldn't figure out how to handle it, John, and it was heartbreaking. Yeah, I feel obligated yeah. to put bands like High on Fire and Acid King and Wind Hand and Sleep in the top right. 10. But in fact, there's a parallel yeah. list of smaller bands that I feel just as strongly about that also need to be recognized. But, but I, I did. But I don't want them to be up in, you know, 30, 40, 59 or whatever. Yep, I get it. So you did the right thing. Well, that brings us to my pick, which is Out of London. This band is on my mind because this riff was going through my head and haunting me for most of the week. I couldn't figure out for the life of me who the song was by. And I didn't have the whole song, it just had maybe about a 10 second loop of the riff in my mind. I even got a hold of one of the DJs that I used to do radio with when Grip of Delusion Radio was a thing. And I hadn't talked to him in mm -hmm. literally years, like we're talking four or five years. But I was so desperate, I just got rid of the awkwardness, and I was like, you know what, I used to listen to your show before mine came on the air, and I swear you played this song. I don't know the name of it. I think it's from somewhere sure. in the New England Doom scene, because it kind of sounds like it might be that style. I even left him a little message where I hummed the riff to him, and I thought, okay, he's got to get this riff. Like, I'm humming it. He's got to get it. Nope, he didn't get it. And so I went to a YouTube yeah. channel, and I sorted backwards from the oldest clips. Parish of Doom is the name of the YouTube channel. One of my favorites. And first videos I came across was from a band called Serpent Venom. I just hit play on the album of things seen and unseen. And by the second song, I had found it. It's Sorrow's Bastard. So I think people are going to recognize this. And if they don't recognize it, then they're going to feel like they've heard it before. And you'd be hard pressed to know where other than Serpent Venom, they just found the perfect groove and they went with it. I liked it, totally. Good. Yeah, I dig it. I was like, oh, hey, 2014, huh? I think that's the oldest thing on our list. Uh, they're still together. They left a message on Facebook recently and let people know we're still here. Have they done any shows? Uh, I don't know if they've done any shows for a bit, but uh, they've had quite a few legendary shows in their time with a lot of really good English bands and international bands. But uh, yeah, this is the last mm -hmm. album they did. I think it was their second in uh, 2014. So definitely a, a great listen all the way through, yep. especially if you like your doom fused with very strong, dripping blues. That's what you're gonna get with Serpent Venom. Another one you've put out there for me that I uh, will be looking into more. And it's kind of cool the, the way the mix uh, on this little set mixed, because we finished it up out of Norway. Captain Caravan, off the album Shun the Sun, that was in 2018, uh, on Cursed Tongue Records. It's the first time we've mentioned him in a just a couple shows. <laughs> Eggers Sund, Norway. So we got ourselves some real life Vikings here. Johnny Olson, the, the front man, he's a, an animal live. He really is a great, like just drives it on that stage. Um, 
play Planet Edge Rock for us in they really some strong, strong guitars <laughs> to go with every song. And Shadow King is uh, a unique song that, that it gives you a flavor, which just is what you're not used to, that kind of thing. So that's my pick is Shadow King by Captain Caravan. Yeah, these guys got some nice dual guitar work, some great choruses. One thing you can say about them is, is they're absolutely solid. I had communication, I think, with Johnny, not probably a good couple months ago, probably pre-COVID even. And they're working on stuff, so I'm sure hoping we see something like the end of the year. I mean, who knows with this little situation, but um, thankfully a lot of people can record stuff at home or something. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with these guys. I think uh, we should expect something coming out sometime in the near future. Good band, too. Great guys. Let's give our listeners a chance to catch up with the music. We'll be back with more as we reach into our third segment and go even deeper down the rabbit trail. Got a lot of really good music ahead. Excited for the rest of the show. Stick around with us on the Doomed and Stone Show.
You've been listening to Shadow King by Captain Caravan from the album Shun the Sun. Before that, Serpent Venom making a return after six years. Not new music from them, just us digging into old music from the album Of Things Seen and Unseen, produced in 2014, released that same year. We heard Sorrow's Bastard, and oh, how I love that riff. Speaking of riffs, Monster Knot has it in spades from the album Enter the Storm on Heavy Psych Sounds, released in 2018. That was Landslide. And Altar of Battle Geese brought us Sledge of Stones from Among the Ruins, released in 2017. We're dancing all over the place tonight, but we are going to play some new music this segment, beginning with a band called Saturna, and that is John's. Uh, real, really good album songs, Black Purple, I picked on the Atlantis album. Uh, just a great band. Uh, last two albums for me have been two exceptional releases. Uh, they're very bluesy, heavy rock. They even have a kind of classic rock mix twinge in there. I mean, they write songs that, quite frankly, will be memorable. Um, they'll stick with you. And uh, there's a bunch of them. And amazing singing and vocals by uh, James Abieco. And um, great two guitars. They really are just a good hard rock slash heavy rock band. And uh, I was honored to have them come over also. Have you heard of these guys much? Billy, you probably haven't, right? No, honestly, this was a new one to me. I was kind of thinking that. I was kind of thinking that. Just like I wouldn't know uh, a little harsher stuff. This sure. is maybe on the end that uh, puts it kind of on the map. But uh, so turn it just a good, good rocking band. Spain's got some stuff going on over there for sure. Yeah. And then you pop over to what, the Netherlands? Yeah, Netherlands by way of Belgium for a band who draws members from both countries. This is a band called Rags with three R's. So I'm sure this is where I get to roll my R's, right? Rags. And if they're not saying it that way, they're missing out on an opportunity. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we are Rags. <laughs> Amazing. High Protein is their brand new album. We just did an interview with them. Uh, it was an interview from our Dutch contributor, Willem Verhappen, who put together our Doomed and Stoned in the Netherlands. I was very happy to, to hear uh, he wrote me, because he's not on social media, but uh, he sent me an email and said, hey, I listened to your last show and you pronounced my name correctly. I was like, hell yeah. I'm sure it's, it's <laughs> I'm sure it probably wasn't that precise but he was very nice in telling me so and so maybe he can uh, shed some light on how to pronounce rags but either way rags is rags it's uh, <laughs> it's a uh, stoner psych funk trio and this song is one of the shortest on the albums it's called messin and that's what it is it's just kind of messing around and it's it's high energy it's a uh, little bratty and I like it yeah, that, probably why I hadn't heard much from them would be the name. It's one of those things. I'm horrible about certain bands' names, and I just, I, it's like looking into the sun. I just can't do it sometimes. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, all right, yeah, that's totally up my, up my alley. That's good stuff. So uh, I really like them. I'm going to check them out for sure. By the way, I always thought the expression, for years and years, I thought the expression was down your alley, which to me makes more sense than up your alley, right? But I mean, it's still the same point. It is. is the you're same at point, the end of yeah. that alley. But I was. <laughs> That's the. I was disappointed. That it, was, it was up your alley and not down your alley. I mean, down your alley just. Sounds, well, it could be either one, I think. It could be, yeah. I'm glad that you said no, that. Billy. I'm you say what you want. I will say There's what I want. No, damn you it. won't get any. Because you know why, Billy? You just tell them, like, it's the same ending. <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm just referring to. I'm at the end of the alley. It's where they're going. It's still That's in what your I like. alley. I'm in the alley. Right. Yeah, it's my fucking alley. I'm not talking <laughs> about your alley. I'm talking about my alley. <laughs> you know, that's the kind of conversation I would have at a, at a at a show. You know, I'm like five beers into it, and you know, talking to band, trying to figure out, you know, if there's any problems and, and shit. And then you you talk to someone every once and you just have these random conversations like that. You know, in the middle of running a show, someone wants to engage with you in like this conversation. <laughs> 
And I'm kind of there to socialize, but at any given minute, I got to go. I mean, not always think of it. You know, you got to go make sure production's going on the right spacing, which uh, it's just it's just funny stuff, man. And so the the alley part reminded me of the, the random conversations you can have uh, at shows. Now, speaking of at shows, Green Desert Water, who I pick, which I think these three bands, and then with our next band, even that too, really has a, a nice blues tinge, each one of them. Uh, mine again is from Spain, Green Desert Water, on uh, Small Stone Records, a very accessible, uh, old school, heavy rock, uh, heavy psych. Uh, it's definitely got some stoner in there. Um, it's really a, a band that, that writes songs, again, you'll remember. Now, what's tricky about them, they'll write songs, most of them are like six, eight minutes. Yeah. And they'll trick you because there's so much different shit happening. And so you kind of think like eight minutes, yeah, how can you do that? It's the same old stuff, but they mix in like a whole other bridge uh, of stuff uh, within the songs and um, live, <laughs> that front man is so funny live. He, he's like a, a fucking, you know, poof haired, Frank Zappa looking guy. I mean, he just, it's just crazy. Um, I love these guys. They, 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 they were a riot. Like everywhere when they played, uh, it, it, people just got energized. The front man knew how to engage people in the crowd too and kind of bring attention. So, you know, people that were just lingering around and not paying attention to the music, he'd get them involved. That's awesome. He was pretty ballsy. I loved it. And uh, it just, my buddies came over, Paul and uh, Billy from Florida, my high school buddies, they came to Planet Desert Rock to see all this. And they only had Green Desert Water for like half of a, one of the days. Because we did one place where it was like indoor, outdoor. And um, people were hanging out on the top of this uh, pickup truck at Bunkhouse or something. It's just it's, it's, uh, random stories of life you have just going to shows. But Green Desert Water, can't wait to hear what they got next. Great band. That's good to hear because I always thought they, you know, having not seen them, I saw a video, but it wasn't really of them. It was just kind of of the landscape that you imagine goes along with Green Desert Water, a, a name like that, and and quite effective yeah. in concept. But having not seen the band, uh, I never imagined they would be as outgoing and and interactive as you described them. And I love to hear that, quite frankly, because yeah. that's what more bands need to do. I, you know, I sound like a broken record a little tonight, and, and maybe I'm just, uh, what do you call it, when you're always looking back in time, and you're, uh, and you're going, oh, that was kind of nice. Not that, Jesus. I've had a day job, too, trust me. I'm a Pisces, I think that means, anyways. Um, but, you know, I, I, I look back, and I'm like, and it brings a smile on my face is when I got to really meet these bands, you know, hanging out and getting to know them and watching the spirit that they had in action. I mean, there were times when doing that, and these guys were so grateful to me, being invited and and doing the, and, and someone believing in their music enough to, to, do, to just say, hey, guys, want to do this. And uh, sometimes I would just have to sit back by myself and just, you know what I mean? Mm. And just watch the interaction of the people that were all brought together based on a blank sheet of paper <laughs> yeah. and a concept. And uh, never as many as you want. You know, I, I lost a lot of money on the second festival, but I feel like the, the reward of what kind of, I mean, it, it, these bands are so good. I mean, I didn't pick bands for convenience. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and I didn't invite a ton. There were some higher middle level bands that I wanted to, to bring in, but I couldn't. But I wanted to commit to getting as many really good up and coming bands as possible. And Green Desert Water is, is, is just one of those that just brings a smile to my face. Um, you know, in, in Saturna as well. Green Desert Water is from Oviedo, uh, Spain. And while uh, Barcelona for Saturna, I've been to the beautiful city of Barcelona a couple times. It's a beautiful city. Not good at giving directions, but beautiful city. Really good. Yeah, Bugs Bunny always tended to end up in Spain after he took a wrong turn at, do you remember where? Oh, God. No, I do not. He would always say when he got up from that hole in the ground, it's like, geez, I must have taken a wrong turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> oh, listen to you. That was, that was you his. You are now the king of lead-in. Yes, that was his famous line. 
And if you if you've forgotten about it, John, you need to go back and and get high and watch some Bugs cartoons. Not the not the newer no. stuff, not the censored stuff. The original Bugs Bunny cartoons, because he would go to the bullfights in Spain and he would end up antagonizing the bullfighter and the bull alike. But he was always there because he took a long, wrong turn in Albuquerque. And that's where our next band is from. It's Red Mesa. Whether they've run into bugs or not is another story for another time. We'll ask him sometime. Right now, the New Mexico band is on fire. They just released The Path to the Deathless, which Doomed and Stone premiered last week. And uh, we're gonna play the, the title track from this one. What I didn't realize when I started my review is that there are two personalities on the recording that have quite a history in the Doomstoner scene. One is Dave Sherman, who not everyone will, will recognize by name, but you'll certainly recognize his voice and his artistry. He's a member of Spirit Caravan, best known though as frontman for the bands Earthless and Weed is Weed. He's got a very distinct focus. Earth Ride. Earth Ride, <laughs> sorry, not Earthless. So he, we- I had to stop you, I had to stop you. No, man. no, you, I you did the right train. thing. I knew I was going to do that too. It's like I wrote it down as Earthless and it looked right. And <laughs> I thought, what a great name Earthless is. And I, I just, but I knew somehow it was wrong. And it's definitely Earth Ride. And then the other guest is Wino, Scott Wino Winery, whom we hope maybe we can get right. on the show sometime. He's also with Spirit Caravan. He's with The Obsessed. Yeah. He's with St. Vitus. Both of them make guest appearances on the album. Now, Dave Sherman isn't specifically credited for this opening song, but you can hear him. He's definitely on the track. I can I can almost guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, unless uh, lead singer Brad Fry was taking Dave Sherman lessons. They're both featured <laughs> on here. So it's a great track. It's, oh, he's got some rough vocal. That's what I thought when I first started reviewing it. I thought he was kind of, you know, going that rough vocal direction like Dave Sherman. And then lo and behold, the next track, Dave's on there. So in any event... It's an album that will make you think of the desert. It will make you think of, from the opening track, the rising of the sun on a still cool desert landscape. And then as the album goes along, you can feel the heat rise. You're making way for the shadows. You run into this grizzled old bard with a five o'clock shadow and a guitar, and he's singing about the challenges of life. And that's kind of the image you get from Red Mesa. I mean, it goes back to their their artwork too which has got that very rustic feel to it you know yep i really like this band played a show with me jeez i think it was sometime last year uh at the now defunct beauty bar and uh hung out with these guys party with them the rest of the night <laughs> it's kind of fun stuff and uh these guys are you know uh, following brad fry along has been um it's been interesting to watch because he's uh making some moves i, I dig it I like it. New Mexico is an interesting state that I've never been to before, but I'm going to do a drive across country uh, when I eventually move back to Florida. And so I, I'm going to drive straight through New Mexico, I think. Yeah. And finally see what, like, I think I did it when I was seven or something. You know what I mean? That is, I don't remember anything, hardly. So yeah. uh, it'd be cool to get go through Albuquerque and see the Breaking Bad stuff, too. Is that right? Or is that the other city? I never, I mean, I shouldn't admit this on public radio but i've never seen an episode of breaking bad why not i have this problem this hang up with things that are critically acclaimed and popular it just takes me forever to see them like i didn't see oh, game God. of thrones until years <laughs> years and years after it was out i think you just hate the hype don't you i hate the hype i don't know why somehow it just doesn't seem like it could be real right yeah and game of thrones was mostly good up until the later seasons what was the other one I saw late in the game? <laughs> uh, the Sopranos. I saw The Sopranos years and decades after the fact. And I liked it. I watched the whole series. In I order? I watched everything in order. Okay. And you liked it? I liked it, yeah. Especially yeah, that very, it's so good. Especially, I got in late to it. Especially that very last scene from the very last episode with the Foreigner song. I just thought that was so perfectly done. It's never left. It was Journey. It, was it Journey? Okay. Journey Foreigner, yeah, same yes. to me. Don't Stop Believing. And that was one of the most simultaneously warm and haunting scenes in all of all of television. But uh, I digress. I enjoy it more now that I think of it. 
let's take a break and let's listen to these guys. We'll be back with more. We got a final segment coming up, and uh, it's going to be fun. We appreciate you being with us on the Doom and Stone Show.
That was The Path to the Deathless by Red Mesa from the album of the same name. Before that, Green Desert Water bringing us Chaman from Solar Plexus. We also heard from Rags, or maybe it's Rags, I'm hoping, with Messin from their new album, High Protein. And Saturna brought us Black Purple from their 2019 record, Atlantis. And now we come to our final segment, and a lot of wild cards on this one. I'm going to have you go first, John. Yeah, we got a good freaky mix here. Land on the final band from the Planet Desert Rock weekend that I decided to highlight this evening, and that's 1968. Temple of Acid, which is the song, uh, definitely one of the ones that helped thrust them even further into the scene in 2018. Ballads of Godless. The great name of an album that is. I love it. This guy's from Cheshire, England. Cheshire. Their album that they put out last is one they did at the Whiskey. They did a live one. But this this song, this album, has so many different influences in there. Definitely a blues in there, but grunge is in there. There's uh, somewhere in the, the stoner rock world that fits in that massive world. What would you say are other influences or maybe bands that influence them? Oh, man, I'm totally hearing Alice in Chains in their music. But without the harmony vocals, they're not really much on the harmony vocals as much. No, no, um, that's true. It's just uh, kind of got that spirit, that kind of grungy feel to it. I really dig it. Just a really good band. Really good stuff. You probably heard them a little bit in the past, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And they were on the Doom charts all last year. Year before. Yeah, we were all over them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right on. Good guys, too. Poor Sam Orr, the guitarist, he lost through through the mail. He mailed, they mailed their equipment over, and uh, he lost his strap guitar strap like something he'd had for years and years and freaking post off me you know, postal system lost it along the uh, way i felt so bad for that him that sucks yeah sam or the the guitarist he does a lot of uh facebook live uh pretty consistently him just jamming on the guitar doing something you know theme to it or a, a particular song even very talented guy certainly a rock star on stage and their their singer another guy i mean he's a pure front man just like captain caravan they have a guy that just sings <laughs> and he's a wild man up there these guys kill it live very electrifying <laughs> i mean people were hanging out with them after the show these brits man they know how to drink you know no one's shying away from drinking and drinking all you know and playing music and afterwards partying i mean yeah these cats are the cool cats i'd love to hear something new from them i would have to guess there's something in the works that made such a next level splash with this album. You hope they seize the moment here shortly. And I, I even wonder like what label gets them, you know, cause that's a, it's a band worth looking at. Yeah, they definitely have proven their chops. So I hope the best for them. Yeah. Now your, your pick is great off a new album, uh, a band that's been around a little bit. Yeah, Curse the Sun, they're legends in the scene. They've been around for over a decade. They're now signed with Ripple Music. This is Excruciation, their big comeback. And we uh, had a chance to debut a live video from this album, and I believe they're going to release a number of live videos. Very well done, very professionally mixed with the audio. We shared the, the video for the first track, but the track that really impresses me on this album is the one that's probably their most dour lyrically. It is downright depressing. And when a band can get depressing right... That's why you love it. They get all my love, you bet. <laughs> November is the name of the song. And what's attractive about this, before I even knew what it was about, I knew it was a little bittersweet, but before I even knew what it was about, amazing vocal harmonies. It makes the song sound ascendant. It's just great. I haven't heard them do anything like this before. So kudos to the band out of Connecticut, Curse the Sun. Good band, a very, very strong album. I, I, I've done at least a listen or so of it. It's another one where I, I commit that if I like it enough, I'm gonna you know, hit it for a second and third time and, and, and so on. And that, that's a, I listened to the album and I was like, hey, that's it's good. It's, it, I mean, it's different too at the same time. And I think that's kind of necessary at times. Another Ripple band. Yes, it is, yep. And it's got a nice balance of rock and metal. So they know how to, Bring those two styles together when necessary or to deal with them separately and make it work as an album. I think a, a couple of their band members listen to the show 
somewhat regularly, oh, uh, cool. along with a few of the other cats we've talked about tonight. Nice. Yeah. Good to it's have, always good. Have the fans listening, definitely. So shout out to you guys. When I, I send off little uh, messages sometimes, like, hey, just want to let you know. They're like, right on. Right? We love getting this. So it's always good to hear, man. It's time to see some momentum, and uh, you got to wonder if we'll see them on the Doom charts when it comes to uh, the June ones. Oh, I have no doubt they'll be on the Doom charts. Yeah, I think so, too. Not that I have any, now, any my band, inside I, knowledge or any influence in that direction other than... You have one vote like the I rest of us. Vote, but like everyone else, you know, yeah. Within that group, yeah. And it's just how many points we put to each spot. So, yeah, it, it's it's a great band. So I, I don't see why... I, I say that flippantly because, yeah, pretty sure a lot of people like it already. So good, good stuff, man. The band I picked, Black Elephant... I'm absolutely smitten with the album Cosmic Soul. This is on Smallstone. Another one out of Smallstone. 2018 was an unbelievable year for Smallstone. Uh, Sun Drifter was out also from Massachusetts. I think Lachinga. That label really did some amazing work. But, but this one might have been the best album on that label. And that's even with Germ out. Jeremy Irons, The Red Gang, Malibu's. Like those two albums are like a 1A, 1B for me. Yeah. On, on that year with Smallstone. And Helter Skelter, I mean, you guys, I had a hard time picking a song. I mean, because they're all so special in their own ways. It's a cosmic, like electrified blues, but psych mixed in. Uh, they even list as one of their favorite um, influences, Radio Moscow, which is certainly leading the charge on a certain, you know, entity a certain section of heavy psych but these guys have a way more they have that part and then they have this cleaner production this this airy feel again on on this album and boy the bluesy guitar style action is it's it's uh black elephant is i'm going to say right now I got the unofficial. Okay, they, we'll we'll see something from these guys hmm. uh, this year. Nice. So mark it down. This is going to be one of these bands that people are going to look at. You know, hopefully it gets up by the end of the year. People are going to look at the end of the year list like, huh? Because almost any person I've ever given this this album to and said, hey, you might like this, they come back and go, holy shit, <laughs> <laughs> like that's unique, that's cool. Um, their early stuff is much heavier which is kind of odd. This way more cleaner and just way more put together kind of album. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing much. That's uh, it. I'm nothing done. much I can add to that, honestly. <laughs> you said it all. They're, they're a great group and deserve all the accolades that, that they've gotten so far. So looking forward to sharing this yeah. one with our, our listeners. Guess where they're from? Where are they from? Italy. Oh. Savona, Italy. Okay. Yeah. Another good Italian band. That's right. But then, you know, the, the last band you put up here, Billy, uh, has this name that I, I, you're, you're doing it just to show off because you're so good at pronouncing names. But you would never think that they're from where they're from. It, it's, so give us the story. What the hell is going on with this? Well, first I want to hear you try to pronounce their name, John. No! <laughs> Come on. I do have the... No fucking way! Look at that thing! Humor me. Uh, <laughs> here is the girl. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, so the name of the band is... Yes, Rack I'm glad I could make your... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I could make your night on that one. The name of the band is Zaraxagil. Zaraxagil is a reference to a J.R.R. Tolkien scene... It's actually a mountain in Middle Earth called Zaraxagil, um, and it stands above the Dwarvian realm of Khazark Doom. So very appropriate for a Doom band. Um, they're out of Portland, Oregon. Three guys, two of them are brothers, one of them is a cousin, and uh, they come from Northern California, went to school in Portland. I understand that uh, at least one of the members uh, took up jazz, and um, you can really see and, and hear the different textures of not only traditional metal, but jazz and even symphonic characteristics in their works. 
They've got three albums out. The first one was a complete J.R.R. Tolkien themed album. The second one was a little bit more breaking away from that. Four interlocking tracks. The most recent album came out in 2019. This is close enough to all the end of the year, the end of the, you know, the, at the beginning of the holiday season, etc. And then we all know what happened after the holidays. All things fell apart. But I have great faith in Zaraxigo. They've already had some great festival appearances. But outside of Portland, they're not as well known as they should be. If you're a fan of Elder, you need to be all over Zaraxigo. They are one of the most inspiring progressive metal bands out there. And they take truly a grand symphonic approach to everything they do. Um, I can't say enough good things about them. And, and maybe you won't feel the same way after you listen, but... Uh, I'm telling you, if you want music that, that you can get real cool. lost in and invested in, um, go for this one. I, this is the only song I didn't get to listen to today. Oh, yeah. So I'll be intrigued to do that. Okay. The only one. Yeah, I didn't get it there. Well, it is. So uh, uh, I have something to, to, to check out right after the show. Yeah, it is a good 12-minute song. There's a reason why I programmed it last. You'll think it's only instrumental for most of it. But you do get vocals. They are a little bit harsher vocals, but you're gonna have to deal with it, John, because it's part of the it's part of the ambiance. It's part of the flavor. Um, I filmed them live. It's like a mastodon thing. Right? Yeah, I, I filmed whole shows by them uh, three different times, uh, maybe four, and each one is an experience. Tons of high energy, lots of fun, and most of all, the musicianship. And the attention to detail is just unparalleled. Um, great musicians, great guys. They're just recording some really cool stuff, but they do it well. It's, it's definitely not sloppy. It's well compacted, well put together, well, I'll say composed. Yeah. Nice. And it makes a fitting ending to our program. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So, John, thanks so much for being with us. And, and we've uh, got this streaming on SoundCloud. We've got it streaming on MixCloud. It's also streaming now on YouTube, which is awesome. Appreciate your support yep. for the program. Gotten a few new patrons since the last few shows, which is really nice. It definitely helps out expenses. If you'd like to support the show, just $5 a month, you become a High on Fiverr supporter. And I do my very best to give you some exclusive content behind the scenes, including uh, shows of uh, two hours plus music. Less talk on those, more rock and metal. And um, a lot of it focuses on newer discoveries that I'm having, but I'll, I'll throw in a few surprises as well. Go to patreon.com forward slash doomed and stone to pledge your support. And with that, we're going to say good night and doom on.
Does anybody have the time? Five minutes or twelve. Okay, that's enough for today. On Monday, we'll talk about another pattern that might be of interest to all of you, cannibalism. Have a good weekend. The proceeding was a presentation of Dune and Stone.